In lab two, you should have already watched this video to see how to set up an Embed account, and hopefully you can set that up. The video you're watching now is a lab two part one video. Now of all the browsers that you can possibly use, such as Edge, Firefox, and so forth, the only browser that's going to provide all the features that are built into Kyle Studio Cloud is the Chrome browser. So every time you're gonna use Kyle Studio Cloud, make sure you launch the Chrome browser first, and then bring up Kyle Studio Cloud. To log into Kyle Studio Cloud, you're going to type os.mbed.com. And you're going to go up here, you're going to hit login, login address that was given, and you have the email that you had confirming this. You're going to say next, and you're going to type in your password. When you click on here, it should take you right in. When Kyle Studio Cloud launches, you're going to see three options to start your next project. Since we haven't got a project, we can either say new project, clone, or import a project from the Embed Online Compiler. This Embed Online Compiler has been decommissioned for years, so these are really our only two options here. In part two of the procedure, it says copy this link, and then we're going to paste it under the file slash clone option in Kyle Studio Cloud. So we're going to just right mouse click, copy link, now that we've copied the link to the project we want, we're going to go down here and select clone. It's going to bring up the requester, and we're going to paste into that requester the GitHub link to the Hello World program, and it's going to come in as project name Hello World. It's going to make this the active project, and you can only have one active project at a time. Now when we say add, you can see it's not highlighted, but eventually it will become highlighted, as we can see here. And that means this is the active project. No matter how many projects you have in here, only one can be highlighted and become the active project. If we open this up, we're going to see that this is using Embed OS 5. Altogether, there's three versions of Embed operating system, Embed OS 2, Embed OS 5, and Embed OS 6. We're going to be using Embed OS 5, but we're going to be looking at the other two operating systems as well. Now, if we go down here to main and click on it, you can see our program coming up here. And it says this program will print Hello World on the serial monitor screen using Embed OS 5. And it says make sure that to set the serial monitor to 9600 baud. Now, before we actually execute this code, we have to select a target. So we click here and we're going to type in FRD and it's going to come up with a whole bunch of FRDMs. And the one that we have, as you know, in the lab is the Freedom K64. So for build target, we're always going to choose Freedom K64, which is here. And then we have to have the connected device. Now, assuming your DAP link is connected in the lab to your Freedom K64, we can click here because it will show up in the list and then you'll see all of these light up. Now, altogether, there are three different ways to run our code. The first one here is to build project. Now, build project, what it does is it takes our source code that we've got over here and creates a bin file, which is a binary file for this that we can then download to the board. Once it creates a bin file, we have to drag and drop that into DAPLink, which is the thing connecting our microcontroller, the Freedom K64 to our PC. And then once it downloads it, then we have to hit the reset on the microcontroller and then the program runs. This is the next option we have, which is run project, which does all that with one button press, okay, which is pretty cool. So we're going to do this first just to show you the procedure of what this button is going to do, but we're going to use this button pretty much all through our course. The next one is called the debug project, and debug allows us to set breakpoints, troubleshoot, single step, and so forth in here. And so these are the three different ways we can run our code. This one at the end here with the greater than symbol is the serial monitor. And that's what we're going to open up to actually see what's going on as we print our hello world on our screen. So let's take a look at the basic one first. I'm just going to click here and it's going to then under output here, it's going to show all the different steps it's going to use to actually create the bin file. And eventually when the bin file has been created, there it is, it's going to show up up here. And then we're going to right mouse click and show in Finder because I'm using a Mac. And we're just going to drag and drop this thing into DAPLink. And you'll see that DAPLink will disappear and then come back. There it goes away and it's going to come back shortly. There we go. And now it's downloaded to the board. The other thing that we have to do is then hit the reset on our board to actually have it execute. Before we do that, though, we'd like to go here to the serial monitor and make sure that we always set that to 9600 baud. And you'll see it says hello world here. 
Now, if I hit the reset button on our microcontroller, every time I hit that reset button, it's going to say, hello world. Now, notice part of this has gone off the top, and this is under Freedom K64. So everything under here is our serial monitor. And if we want to right mouse click on here and say toggle maximize, we can have it full screen where we have a huge amount of real estate here to look at it. Or we can go back up here and say right mouse click, toggle maximize, and we're back to the same view. Now that we run our program and seen Hello World coming up on the screen and going to a new line every time we hit the reset, let's take a look at how this is done. First of all, we have include embed.h which has to be included in all the programs because all our programs that go to the Freedom K64 require the embed library. Notice we've got uh, a forever sit here because this is like a while one semicolon here that it's going to sit here forever because with microcontrollers, you cannot let it go past the last bracket. So either you have a number of statements with this, which is going to cause it to sit here forever, or you've got an infinite loop going around a number of statements up here. So those are the only two things you can do with a microcontroller to make sure it doesn't go past this particular bracket. Now I'm going to make one small change here. I'm going to go up here and get rid of the backslash n, and I'm going to run it. And this time, instead of using the hammer where we drag dropped and hit the reset, we're going to hit this, which does all of that in one go. So let's hit this. It's preparing to run, doing all this kind of stuff. So once it's finished flashing our code here, we're going to go to Freedom K64 and nothing came up. We've got hello world, but there's no hello world coming here. And the reason for that, we had a backslash in which not only printed this text, but forced it to go to a new line. Without that, it's not going to do any print statements. Now, one way to make that happen is to use F flush standard out, which means that it's going to flush what's in the buffer to the screen. Because when you do a print, it doesn't go to the screen automatically unless you F flush standard out. It sits in a buffer, and that buffer will not be flushed unless you do something like a backslash n or do something else like grab an input or something. So F flush standard out is the only thing that's going to make it go to the screen right after the print F. So let's go up here, and again, we have to hit the big S to go back here. Let's run it again with this one little change. And this time when we go to Freedom K64, we have Hello World again. But if I press the reset button, we're going to see Hello World going across this way because there's nothing to put it on to a new line. So anytime you do a printf, it has to be followed by a F flush standard out to make sure whatever's in the printf goes to the screen because it's not automatic.